Hey YouTube, this is your homeboy Seth McDonald Four, and I want to tell you this is an online coaching fitness martial art trainer, and I want to say is that I'm doing a tornado kick in this first session of my bag workout. I have not done the tornado kick in a long time, um, but I still remember on how it's done. But it's just it's just been a while since I've done it. I'm a little sloppy at it, but I noticed my technique was getting better toward the end. So, I was doing 20 reps on each side. Then I went into my normal basic, basic um, jab cross hook with the forward elbow. And then after that, I believe I did... Front leg, roundhouse, punch, punch, with a front kick. And then, after that, I did jab cross, I think, and a knee. And then, I think I did a jab cross hook hook headbutt so it's like a muay thai workout um for the streets i mean headbutting is against the rules in muay thai um unless if it's on the ground fighting and muay thai where anything goes but then like the kumite you know the kumite fighting way like you see in john claude van damme movies you know but technically um Headbutts are not allowed in martial art tournaments, even in boxing, kickboxing, or whatever. But because they made it illegal, because um, it could cause serious brain damage to the opponent's head, and plus it can also probably kill a person as well if, um, if the person got headbutted too hard or a concussion may be occurred. Which, you know, I don't really get it because really technically you can get a concussion from a kick, you can get a concussion from a punch, you can get a concussion from a knee. You know, look at all these football players you see on TV. You know, they get tackled left and right. Look at these MMA fighters. They get hit all the time in the head. Look at all these boxers. They get hit all the time in the head. You know, who cares about concussions? You know, if you can train your had to be a lethal weapon, you know, be strong in the forehead area, you know, you could probably really knock somebody out just by headbutting. Um, that's in the Shaolin way, the Shaolin way of fighting. You know, Shaolin warriors, they train the Iron Head. And the Iron Head is basically, you know, hitting things with your head. And, um... So that's where I kind of got that method from was hitting my head on the bag is because uh, I also even watched on Cobra Kai where Johnny was giving a lesson to his students on how to do a headbutt in a street fight and which I kind of taken a liking on how he did the headbutt in, in the show and, and I watched him on how he done it and so I kind of mimicked it and into my arsenal and so it's like you know I'm learning a lot from the show even though it's just a movie or a TV shit series I'm learning it from like the show on what Johnny teaches I'm kind of learning from what Daniel teaches in a way um, on Cobra Kai but the thing of it is it's like it's just real it's not real it's a movie but, you know, if you train hard enough, you know, you can apply on what you learn in movies, you know, out of movies, you know, you can do it in real life, you know, if you just train hard enough. And I look at it this way. I train everybody. I've been training so far I'm on my sixth day of working out. Um, tomorrow will be my sixth day, actually, if I do decide to work out tomorrow. 
Um, usually I give myself two days rest, but, you know, since I was sick that one week, um, I didn't really get much of a workout in, um, because I was sick, and it took me a while to get my full strength back and everything, plus I had that shoulder injury a while back that threw me off, so I'm trying to get back into top physical shape the way I was and, and everything else, and that's the reason why I do a lot of these back workout videos. Because it's a good cardiovascular workout, um, it's not too strenuous, um, it can be at some times, you know, it just depends on what you're learning, you know, if you're learning martial arts like I am, then, yeah, I mean, if you're doing martial arts like I am, then yeah, it's going to be strenuous, but if you're just hitting the bag, just getting a good workout in, um, basically, you know, working on techniques, working on combos, I do the combo thing because that's my thing, my way, and I, I know you can't really just do combos on the combo combo drills on the street, but you know it gets you into shape when you're doing combo drills. Because most people say, "Oh, you gotta, you know, you gotta do it well, like how, how you're fighting an opponent on the bag." No, you don't. I say you don't really have to do it like how you you fight an opponent on the bag. I said, you can do it stationary, you can do it, you know, standing still. Yeah, you may not stand stand still in a fight, but if it helps you work on your coordination, on your technique, you know, then, yeah. I said, then if you get too advanced, then, then you start moving around and, you know, add some combos, add some combinations of your own and, and everything else and, you know, just do it that way. But the thing of it is, it's that, you know, you just gotta work hard, you gotta keep at it, you gotta, you know, strive every day for it, you know, you gotta, you know, as Apollo Creed would tell Rocky, you know, you know, you gotta have that eye look, you gotta have that eye of the tiger, you know, you always gotta stay hungry, you know, you, there is no tomorrow, you know, you never know what tomorrow may bring, you know, so that's my way of motivation, and... And that, you know, that to me, it's like, a good, like I said, it's a good stress reliever, you know, if you have a lot on your mind, um, it helps you calm your mind down, um, it leaves all that tension out, when you have nowhere to go with it, or, you know, if you have so much energy, you just don't know what to do with it, so you just hit the back, you hit the punch bag, and... Yeah, if you do it just right, I mean, you can get a, if you do it for a whole hour, I mean, you can get a good sweat on. I do it 30 minutes straight, and uh, 30 minutes straight blast on this combinations after combinations, and, and then drilling after drilling. And sometimes I'll do rounds on it. I mean, I'll just do, like, sometimes I'll do six rounds of 3 minutes and 30 seconds. You know, usually 30 seconds ain't really a real good time rest period, but usually in a match, did I actually allow you to have one minute rest in an actual match? But when it comes to uh, when it comes to fighting, but when it comes to your fitness level, usually I just give myself 30 seconds because usually that's what my body, all my body needs and takes is a 30 second rest period. In between each round, I'm used to just being able to just hit the bag, you know, without stopping and just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. Hitting it. And uh, um, in my training when I was a kid, and that's how I trained. You know, they didn't have stopwatches back then. They didn't have um, cameras back then where you can record your sessions and everything else. And you know, where you can kind of watch on what you're doing wrong and stuff like that. And that's what I love about technology today. You know, it's just kind of changing so much that, you know, you can, you can actually film yourself doing things. And you can just kind of watch your mistakes on what you do. So that's kind of a learning process as well for yourself. You know, if you see your hand, like, you know, if you notice that your hands are dropping low, well, okay, you need to tell yourself you need to keep your hands up. And, and that's how you train to get better. Because you, if you record yourself 
hitting the bag and you, you watch your mistakes on what you do then that could help you to better better yourself in what you do in martial arts um you can also practice in the air um if you have a wooden dummy you know you can practice on a wooden dummy for like kung fu um um if you're, if you're practicing kung fu usually they use a wooden dummy um i do know a little bit of kung fu not a whole lot but i do know a little bit of it um I know a little bit of Wing Chun. I mean, I'm not an expert at it. I know like just the basic level of it, and I said I learned how to book. So it's like that's how I know how to do things of Wing Chun. Um, and I lo I'm learning by watching other videos online on Wing Chun and stuff. And Wing Chun is very unique in its own way. Um, but it's not really effective, and as most people think it seems to be. And to me, I think what is the best effective martial art? And the best effective martial art, the two top stand up arts, would be karate and um, Muay Thai. Karate. Karate, Muay Thai, and boxing. Those are three effective arts in stand-up fight, you know, in my opinion. And, but when it comes to, like, Taekwondo, yeah, Taekwondo has its advantages. You know, if you want to get acrobatic and, and stuff like that. Um, but, and if you want to get strong in your legs and learn how to use your legs in fighting, um, I've done Taekwondo before, and I got up to black belt in it, and I got up to red belt in, um, another style of form of Taekwondo. Two different styles of Taekwondo I have a belt in. Um, but, but like I said, that one I got to belt from, I actually learned old school karate from a Marine that was teaching the class at the time. And he thought he took me under his wing as a student, and I was the only one getting taught. By him. And um, he wouldn't teach no one else. So nobody was going to learn from him on what he was teaching me. And and he didn't want to teach anybody else, but he saw something in me that most of the other senseis did. And. Um, he, he saw that I had potential and that I just needed to unleash that potential when it comes to train. And, but he also noticed I had a temper. And so he learned to help me control my temper. He learned to help me to um, unleash my potential as well into training in the martial arts to learn different things, new things, learn how to cook, learn how to whatever I can. He said, you know, if I leave you, he says, get a bunch of books, learn how to books, go and learn some more things than what I'm teaching you. So that's what I did. I mean, because, yeah, the school was great, you know, to learn, learn the sensei and stuff, you know, over the years, but sometimes, yeah, doing a class environment, yeah, it's kind of boring, you know, you do the same patterns, same drills, over and over and over, and then, and then you feel like, okay, you know, and then you kind of just wonder, like, well, what's the point of this, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over in classes, you know, going up and down the mats, going up and down the jerk and drills and stuff like that, you know, in a class setting. And when when I got up to black belt and I was supposed to test for my second degree, but my the owner of school said I was getting too dangerous. And what I don't know what he mean by that, but he was saying that I was getting too dangerous because I had a temper on me. I didn't know how to control it, and plus I was learning, like, I learned Krav Maga, which was a master course, and, um, 
the school as an ATA school and I learned I took a two months master course I learned that and I mastered it and I got a certificate and I, I lost a certificate but I had a certificate and saying I passed the class and um, but because of the, I moved so much around all the time and everything else and but you know it was just that he said since I learned from the club plus I'm learning some other styles plus I learned old school karate and he says I was becoming too much of a legal weapon and I told him I said there's no such thing as a legal weapon I said you're always telling your students to always be open minded and everything else and and I said, and that's what I'm doing. And I said, so you're going against all of what you're teaching. And he didn't like the fact that I was kind of smart off to. And, and he was like, well, I'm not going to test you. And I said, I have the money right here and right now in my hand. And I said, I'll wait till the next cycle of testing cycle and test it. And he said, no. I said, so you're not ready for So I ended up saying, okay, well then he was like, okay. So I ended up going to the ITF Taekwondo school, and it was old school Taekwondo. And it was the old school international Taekwondo academy. And um the thing of it is is that you know that a lot of people tend to see to reach a certain rank reach a certain level and everything else and everything else and um and it's always the same thing in a different style no matter what uh taekwondo training taekwondo um in every style of taekwondo is always the same same pattern same movement same way of moving same way of doing their kicks and everything and same with karate karate and taekwondo it's basically the same thing in every style of martial art which you know I'm really fond of Jeet Kune Do I'm really I'm really fond of Jeet Kune Do Bruce Lee's art, but I know it's not really really practical for the street, but it's good for like if you're training in martial arts itself and um, like if you want to get in shape, you know, it's always good to, you know, better yourself in the martial arts and, and everything else, go beyond your limits. You know, like how he did in the title of Chief and in, in the style of that book. And basically that was just like how to get in shape, how to express yourself in different styles, you know, be limitless and not be bound just by style. You know, just be formless, you know, be water, be like shapeless, be, go with the flow of niche, the flow of life. And in the flow of water. And he said, like, be water, my friend. And really, technically, that's what I try to do. But sometimes, you know, when life gets you down, sometimes when life makes you mad, sometimes, you know, when, when everything goes to chaos in your life, sometimes that philosophy just goes out the door. And, you know, you just have no way of controlling it. And to me, you know, I learned to control my anger. 
a little bit better than what I have been. I know when I was getting mad in the past when I was younger, I mean, I would throw, I would throw things. I didn't care where I threw them. I would have a temper and I would just blank out. And I wouldn't care who I hurt in a way. And that's just how I was. It's that I just had a lot of anger issues. And, but I've got, since I got an order, I realized on what my sensei was telling me, and I learned to humble myself. I learned to better and humble myself, and I learned to channel my anger through my workout sessions. I said I might pay for it later on down the road, you know, from doing it that way, but, you know, where else are you going to go with it, and, and that's the thing, and so, and so that's how I, why I work out, because it helps me channel my anger, it helps me channel my anxiety, and, and plus it, you know, whatever it's on my mind, it gets off of it, it takes me into another world, it's my zen, my meditation, and my way of training. And as like I said, the three top stand up arts karate, Muay Thai, and boxing. Boxing, those are the three main arts that I think are really, really effective when it comes to fighting. And, but I could be wrong. A lot of people would say Krav Maga is the most effective style, and I do agree, you know, Krav Maga is effective style for the streets, but it lacks a lot of stuff, and which I've noticed when I was studying it, because the one way I was studying it in my class, that we was doing more like Muay Thai and um, Muay Thai fighting and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training combined with the Muay Thai, kind of like MMA, and um, we would add knife defense, and we would add gun defense, and, but, you know, it is a lot of a few details, um, a few moves that I didn't really care too much that it didn't have in it, and, and it only had like three kicks, they had the front kick, they had the roundhouse kick, and it had the side kick. Those were only three kicks that you had to learn in Krav Maga. And then, for like punches, you had to learn the, all the boxing combinations. And then, the elbow strike, all the elbow strikes, and everything else. So, there you have it folks, set it down for, um, signing off, and, um, I'll talk to y'all later. And, I hope you enjoyed this bad workout video, and, but like I said, please hit the like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video, and peace.